my regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed, and loving service to the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. So I have a reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. How is this long? It seems like it's really long. Is it okay? Because it's, it's, oh, it's out of my way. <laughs> Because when it's this loud, it's out of my way. It's not in front of the book, and I'm not going around it. It's okay. It's okay? Yeah. Good. It works good this way. Okay. Kalena. Kalena. Milita. Milita. Diyam. Diyam. Avamrishya. Avamrishya. Nrena. Nrena. That's interesting. You have an R, not a bar over. An R vowel with a bar over it. Don't have it very often. Nrenam. Nrenam. <coughs> Kalena militaniam amrishyam. Let's see. Kalena militaniam amrishyam. Kalena militaniam amrishyam. Nigamo, Nigamo, Bata, Bata, Dura, Dura, Hara, Hara, Stoka, Yusham, Swan, Nigamo, Bata, Dura, Hara, Stoka, Yusham, Swan, Nigamo, Bata, Dura, Sati Satyavatyam Satyavatyam Avirhi Tastwan Nuyu Gam Sati Satyavatyam Avirhi Tastwan Veda Yumam Yumam Vita Vita Pasho Pasho Viva Jishyati Sma Veda Juma Vita Pasho Viva Jishyati Sma Veda Juma Vita Pasho Viva Jishyati Sma Kalena Milita Diyam Avam Rishan Rinam Kalena Milita Diyam Avam Rishan Rinam Stoka Yusham Swanigamo Bata Dura Para Veda Juma Vita Pasho Viva Jishya Tisma Veda Juma Vita Pasho Viva Jishya Tisma Kalena Milita Diyam Avam Risha Nirinam Kalena Milita Diyam Avam Risha Nirinam Stoka Yusham Swanigamo Vata Dura Para Stoka Yusham Swanigamo Vata Dura Para Avirhi Tastwa Nu Yugam Sahi Satya Vatyam Avirhi Tastwa Nu Yugam Sahi Satya Vatyam Veda Drumam Vita Pasho Viva Jishya Tisma Veda Drumam Vita Pasho Viva Jishya Tisma Kale Nami Tadiyam Avam Rishya Rinam Kale Nami Thank you. 
Considering the difficulties. Mrinam. Mrinam. Of humanity at large. Of humanity at large. Stoka Ayusham. Stoka Ayusham. Of the short living persons. Of the short living persons. Swanigamaha. Swanigamaha. The Vedic literatures compiled by him. The Vedic literatures compiled by him. There's a capital H there. That's interesting. Bhatta. Bhatta. Exactly. Exactly. Dura Paraha. Dura Paraha. Greatly difficult. Greatly difficult. Avirita. Avirita. Having appeared as. Having appeared as. Two. Two. But. But. Anu Yugam. Anu Yugam. In terms of the age. In terms of the age. Saha. Saha. He, the Lord. He, the Lord. He, he, certainly. Certainly. Satyavatyam. Satyavatyam. In the womb of Satyavati. In the womb of Satyavati. Veda Drumam. Veda Drumam. The desired tree of the Vedas. The desired tree of the Vedas. Vita Pashaha. Vita Pashaha. By division of branches. By division of branches. Vibhajishyati. Vibhajishyati. Will divide. Will divide. Sma. Sma. As it were. As it were. Translation and purport by Zaran Grace A.C. Bhakti Ranta Samashiva Prabhupada. The Lord Himself in His incarnation as the son of Satyavati, Vyasadeva, will consider His compilation of the Vedic literature to be very difficult for the less intelligent persons with short life. And thus he will divide the tree of Vedic knowledge into different branches according to the circumstances of the particular age. Uh, please repeat. The Lord Himself. The Lord Himself. In His incarnation. In His incarnation. As the Son of Satyavati, the As the Son of Satyavati, the Will consider His compilation of the Vedic literature. Will consider His compilation of the Vedic literature. To be very difficult for the less intelligent persons. To be very difficult for the less intelligent persons. With short life. With short life. 
And thus he will divide the tree of Vedic knowledge. And thus he will divide the tree of Vedic knowledge, 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 knowledge into different branches. Into different, different branches. branches. According to the circumstances of the particular age. According to the circumstances of the particular age. <clears throat> Herein, Brahma mentions the future compilation of Srimad Bhagavatam for the short lived persons of the Kali age. As explained in the first canto, the less intelligent persons of the age of Kali would be not only short lived, but also perplexed with so many problems of life due to the awkward situation of the godless human society. Advancement of material comforts of the body is activity in the mode of ignorance according to the laws of material nature. Advancement of material comforts of the body is activity in the mode of ignorance according to the laws of material nature. Real advancement of knowledge means progress in of knowledge in self-realization. But in the age of Kali, the less intelligent men mistakenly consider the short lifetime of 100 years, now factually reduced to about 40 or 60 years, to be all in all. They are less intelligent because they have no information of the eternity of life. They identify with the temporary material body existing for 40 years and consider it the only basic principle of life. Such persons are described as equal to the asses and bulls. But the Lord, as the compassionate Father of all living beings, imparts unto them the vast Vedic knowledge in short treatises, like the Bhagavad Gita, and for the graduates, the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Puranas and the Mahabharata are also similarly, similarly made by Vyasadeva for the different types of men in the modes of material nature. But none of them are independent of the Vedic principles. So Magyana Chimrandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Omile Tam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurve Noha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance. My spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I put my respectful obeisances unto him. So, this is about Srila Vyasadev. And right, up, right up, immediately, the Lord himself in his incarnation as a son of Satyavati. So, this has been a fascination of mine lately about who exactly is Srila Vyasate, what kind of Shaktivesh avatar is he. We had a discussion about this Shaktivesh avatar thing that it has to be, it doesn't have to be. Um, I found some quote and proper, which I'll try to, I think I can read it in my notebook here, that, my little book. Another book. Where is my little book here? That um, there's two kinds of Shaktivesh avatars. Directly empowered and indirectly empowered. Directly empowered are like apparently Vishnu Tattva, so I find that in here. Um, anyway, it's quite fascinating to me. <clears throat> and uh, definitely there's some special things about Srila Vyasadeva and about his son Shukadeva Goswami. And the Shukadeva Goswami is supposed to be the parrot of, Ma, of, uh, of Radharani, the parrot friend who carries messages. So he's named Shuka, Shukadeva. Parrot, the word parrot is Shuka. So that's his name. And um, he is an eternal associate of Srimati Radharani. And he has special special um, things about his, his birth to his life. So both of them are pretty in, as interesting individuals. And once in a, in a class here I said that um, they're, these sages are special beings. Well, these are not, these are special sages. So they're even more than just sages. But uh, Shukadeva Goswami was in his mother's womb for 15, 16 years, whichever it was, and didn't want to come out because he was a self-realized soul. In order to not kill her, he must have stayed small, right? So he stayed a baby as long as he wanted to. Just like the four Kumaras stayed five years old like they wanted to. And then he came out and he immediately was a 16-year-old boy walking away. And so, and he stayed 16 because he was... <laughs> Walking around, he was among the sages that went with Lord Krishna to Mithila to visit the, the king and the brahmana who were both devotees of Krishna. And so he was among the sages, and that was before Krishna left. And um, at the same time, after Krishna left, some years passed where Krishna Maharaj was the king, and uh, then he was, um, he was cursed. And who comes but 16 year old Shukadeva Goswami? So, he obviously can stay at the age he wants to stay at, and like the four Kumaras. And Srila Vyasadeva was unique because he was conceived, born, and grew up to a young man on the same day. 
And Satyavati, his mother, but she didn't really get to mother him. She had she had her baby and she held her baby and then he grew up. And so, but, but he told her, if you need me, think of me and I'll come. So he knew he would be able to know wherever he is, he would be able to know her thoughts. So these are very unusual things. These are unusual personalities. And uh, to try to know who is category Vishnu Tattva and who is not, it seems to me it's harder and harder to know as I, as I study these things because I got recently so interested. It's harder and harder to know exactly because it's harder and harder to tell the difference because actually all of us are incarnations of Krishna, expansions of Krishna, but, but most of us here are tiny separated expansions of eternal individuality. And um, there's so many expansions of Krishna who are of all sizes, who are um, not separated. But among the, but they could be empowered or carrying a certain power, or they could be, or the jivas who are separated expansions could be powerfully empowered to almost almost equal. So this is very mysterious. And in fact, as I, I read some of these quotes that I had found. Um, it's as if Srila Vyasadeva is a hidden incarnation. You can't be sure because somebody says one way, sometimes the other. It's a hidden incarnation, Vishnu Tattva incarnation, disguised as a Jiva Tattva. It's as if, and, and sometimes it says one way, some the other. I don't know which it is, but for sure. But it appears to me that when Krishna came, more, more than one of him came. Of course, Balaram came, and Balaram is Krishna, just in a different form. So that's the two we know about. And uh, But Srila Vyasadeva came too. And he is sometimes said to be an expansion of Narayan, expansion of Krishna. So so, so um, he, we sometimes we, we realize, we forget that he wrote all of the Vedic literatures, except those that were written around Lord Chaitanya's time. He, he wrote them all, and he compiled them. They were already being spoken. They were already existing. Um, except for Srimad Bhagavatam, I think that that was more because he could see them. And he, it wasn't so much already memorized, already being handed down. The Vedas were already being handed down, but he, he um, wrote them down. He divided them, wrote them down. He did so much, incredibly much. We just take for granted, oh, Srimad yesterday did it. But think what a wonderful thing is. An incarnation of God wrote our scriptures. And they really are all the word of God, whether it's in quotes or not, because it was written by Shiva Vyasadeva, written down by him. And so, um, well, at least, at least compiled, but it was obviously a past inspection. He compiled, if he's God, or if he's such an empowered incarnation of him, then everything that he compiled, that maybe he did not compose, is passing his inspection. So it's the same as if he originated it. Is your hand up? No, I just I'm only just saying, starting. Well, you, uh, she's probably going to say the same thing. Um, my understanding is that uh, Ganesh did the writing for, as Yas spoke. Only for Mahabharat that I've seen. Uh, only for Mahabharat. Uh, but then he spoke it. Prabhupada wrote these books. How do you write it? He spoke in a dictaphone. He's still saying he's the writer. Papa has spoken a dictaphone for most of these books. He didn't no, really no, write. I, I'm not saying that you, you, what you're saying is wrong. I'm okay. saying, but you actually said he, at, at least three times, I think you said he actually wrote it down. And okay, well, my understanding is that Ganesh wrote for him. But, he, but I, my understanding is Ganesh only wrote one of it, so that's only part of it, too. Yeah, exactly. yeah okay. So, was that what you were saying? No, I'll just wait until you're Okay. Done. Okay, so, anyways, um, and not only was he, he was thinking of us when he wrote. Because he wrote it, he wrote them for us. Because in the, the time he wrote it, people were, it was still being memorized. He was looking into the future when it would be difficult. So he, he wrote, he did all this writing for us, thinking of us. So just like when we read Prabhupada's books, after a while you start to sense Prabhupada in them speaking to yourself, speaking to, to us. Because his, this is like, his books are like letters to each of us. Is he's thinking of us. So same with from Srila Vyasadeva, they're to us. And after a while, start thinking about the author, how the author is full of the, 
heartfelt feelings to communicate and give this material to, to me. So, um, so I start to become aware of that. You know the author is hidden in a book. The author is the invisible person. The author chose every word, but we read any, but he chose words about others or about other events or something. And so the author is the hidden person and actually Shula Vyasade doesn't write so much about himself. They just he exists and he's there, he, you know, interacts here or there and it's included. But he doesn't, he doesn't really write that much about himself or tell that much about himself. So the author, we take for granted that the author is hidden, but the author is Shiva Vyasadeva, and this is becoming very fascinating to me. So anyway, this is wonderful that I got to do this verse. So I'm going to read some things that I found. Um, I'm just going to read. I'm going to check all this stuff out. First, I was looking up about Parashuram, so I have some stuff about that. Okay, and let's start with. Uh, oh my gosh, I have a lot of pages. I'm not sure I'm not sure to do. Some of these are hard to understand, the words chosen, but there's some direct. Okay, um, Shakti Vaish Avatars, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, Chapter 8, The Avatars. Um, they, chapter by Shabbatars, have no limit, can't be counted. Two kinds, direct and indirect. Direct, when the Lord himself comes, he is called Sakshat. Indirect, when he's empowered, when he empowers some living entity to represent him. Example, the four Kumaras, Narada, um, Prita, Parashuram, also called Abhay Shabbatars. Um, example of direct. Shesha and Ananta are direct. So that is it's explaining that there are Shakti Veshavatars that are Vishnu And as far as which category, you find, I find that the, the categories change a little bit. But Vishnu, this seems mysterious. It's almost like it's hidden, or it's like it's, it's actually mysterious for anyone to understand. So, but anyways, the direct, direct Shakti Veshavatars are Shesha and Ananta are examples. Indirect, like the four Kumaras, Narada, Prita, Parashalam. Apparently, these are these are Avesh avatars. They are the empowers a living entity. So then, in uh, in the first canto, and about all the um, all the um, incarnations in chapter three, all of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of plenary portions. I think that the four Kumar, the four Kumaras are mentioned, and. I, I think they are Vishnu directly empowered, not um, indirectly empowered, according to the other categories. So I wonder if portion of plenary portion means jivas. I don't know. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just presenting to my studies, and I don't know exactly the answer of some of my questions. Um, this is about Parashuram, one verse said, the lotus eye personality of God and Lord Parashuram. So all of a sudden, Parshuram seems to be the personality of Godhead. Um, okay. The Lord expands in two categories. The Lord expands in two categories: Prabhava and Vaibhava. Vaibhava is partly potent. Prabhava is fully potent like Sri Krishna. Potent Prabhava in two varieties, temporary and eternal. Temporary Mohini, Hamsa, Sukla. I don't know who Sukla is. Eternal, Danvantari, Mishaba, Vyasa, Dadatraya, Kapila. Now Vyasa is an eternal, partly um, potent expansion of Krishna, Vaibhava. So, this makes Vyasa Deva Vishnu Tattva? Uh, question mark. Then, um, okay, then, then I got a quote from today's verse. The Lord himself in his incarnation as the son of Satyavati. The Lord himself. Mm-hmm. So, so he's Krishna. Today he's Krishna. <laughs> but then there's other verses. Um, when he's introduced in, I'm going to go to here. Let's see. 
Okay. We have first about, about Sutta Goswami. This is very interesting. Uh, Sutta Goswami, he's supposed to be riding around his parrot, right? But it says here in 122, two. Shila Sutta, so Sutta Goswami said, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto that great saint, Shukade Goswami, who can enter the hearts of all. What jiva can enter the hearts of all? Shukade can enter the hearts of all. So when he went away to take up the renounced order of life, sannyas, leaving home without undergoing reformation by the sacred thread or the ceremonies observed by the higher caste, his father, Vyasade, fearing separation from him, cried, Oh, my son! So indeed, only the trees, which were absorbed in the same feelings of separation, echoed in response to the big grieved father. Now it seems like Shukade Goswami is greater than Vyasade. Because when there's that story of Shukade Goswami was walking and passed some, some young women who were bathing naked in the river. And they didn't worry about it. They didn't care. And then along came Vyasadev, Shiva Vyasadev, running after his son, and they immediately grabbed for their clothes. And he said, why do you do that? You let him go by. And she says, well, he doesn't differentiate between men and women, and you do because you're married. So that makes, that gives you the idea, oh, he's like a, a jiva, you know, he's not really a Christian. But he's playing a role, perhaps, too. So, um, it's, it's, very, it's very confusing. Actually, it's very mysterious. So, something to really ponder. Um, let's see. And a little bit more about Shukade. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him, Shuka, the spiritual master of all ages, the son of Vyasade, who, out of his great compassion for those gross materialists who struggled to cross over the darkest regions of material existence, spoke this most confidential supplement to the cream of Vedic knowledge after having personally assimilated it by experience. Of course, who, who wrote it originally? It was Vyasadev. Vyasadev was writing this down. This is in the conversation in the course of Nanashanya, but Vyasadev had spiritual television for not only long distance, but past, present, and future. So he can write about the meaning in the, in the forest of Nanashanya, and this conversation, which happened way later, he could write this. And this is in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, which is chapter 2, just this conversation in the sages. He, was, he, he spoke the Bhagavatam, he taught his son, his son spoke it again to Prashya Maharaj, sweetened by his own purity. Then, then Sutta Goswami, who was there, spoke it to the sages of Manasharya, as exactly, I assume, as Shukadev spoke it, and Shiva Vyasadev, who was present when his son was speaking it, now writes down the whole thing as it was presented in the forest of Manasharya. This is quite fascinating in itself. I used to have really doubts. I thought, well, yeah, you know, they're adjusting this so it makes it work on everything. So how could he have known? But thinking materially, you know, when I was new, I didn't understand this. So I thought maybe the Bible time itself is, you know, part of the book or something. I know these things in my mind. But actually, Shura Vyasadeva was able to write down the whole thing. He wrote down all the Puranas, all the, all the Vedas, all the Upanishads, and, and the um, Mahabharata, the Srimad Bhagavatam, etc. Vedanta Sutras, everything he collected and wrote down. So... So it's amazing we have scripture we can read that are directly given. Uh, we didn't grow up with that. You know, we didn't grow up with the idea so in the Bible that, you know, um, such and such book was written by such and such and has such and such a history that somebody decided which to include in the compiler, but they were humans who decided that um, we never had this before. This is so amazing that this is given to us like this. So, um, anyways, let's see, let's go back to The appearance of Srinari, because this talks more about Srila uh, Vyasadeva. There's a story, it's in chapter 4 of the first canto, when they're asking about Srila Vyasadeva and, and Srinari. So here's the story about Vyasadeva. That's where that story is. He was running after Shukadeva Goswami, and the young ladies quickly grabbed their clothes. So. So Vyasadeva, perhaps, if he wrote, wrote that down, he would, no, the sages spoke it. He just basically wrote down as it was, too. 
So never mind, erase that start. So So here is, this is about, this verse today is about dividing the, the um, books, dividing all the Vedas, dividing the Vedas into parts. So I read about that. Once upon a time, he, Vyasadev, as the sun rose, took his morning ablution in the waters of the Saraswati and sat alone to concentrate. The great sage Vyasadev saw anomalies in the duties of the millennium. This happens on the earth in different ages due to unseen forces in the course of time. By the way, this is an interesting thing because... The ages got switched. How they do that? Who knows? So, but the purport says, the great sages like Vyasadeva are liberated souls. Now he's a liberated soul. And therefore they can see clearly past and future. Because Krishna is always a liberated soul. So, you know, who knows? So, thus he could see the future anomalies in the Kali age. And accordingly, he made arrangements for the people in general so they can execute a progressive life in this age, which is full of darkness. There is this description. Where is that? There's a whole purport. Can I ask you? Okay. Wait, can, uh, can you clarify what it is your, your, Are you saying that you think the Shaktivish avatar is a Vishnu Tattva? No, I'm saying that they can be. That they can be. Like Shesha, not Shesha and Ananta, one of them is serving, serving Vishnu and Narayan in the spiritual world, and one of them is holding up the planets, according to my reading. They are they are directly empowered Shakti Veshavatars. They have specific powers, but they are directly incarnations. Mm-hmm. Shesha and Ananta. It's, I, we always think they're the same. But in my readings, Shesha is giving service to Narayan in the, in the Vaikuntha, and Ananta is holding up the planets. Aren't they extensions of uh, the, uh, the chakra, unlike Balaram and Yes, they are. Chatur Yuha, so that, yes. So that, but, but my understanding, I, everything I've heard about Shaktivay Shavitwar is it's a jiva who becomes imbued with a quality of Vishnu. Yes, most Such of as, me. like Kriti mm-hmm. he, he was imbued with administrative powers. So he is he, he's a, a jiva, but he has this special quality that is Vishnu's quality. Like, in this case, then, you're talking about Vyastev, Vyastev is, 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 is given Krishna's writing or Shastric, all the Shastric knowledge, which is, he is by all the Vedas to be known, he is the, he is the compiler of the Vedas, he is the Vedas. So Vyastev is a jiva who is given, he comes, Krishna gives all of his writing or knowledge to him. Yeah, I want. I used to think it was all real simple like that too, but I can't find it that simple when I researched it. Is what I'm saying. The other question is then I have for you is there's a conversation at some point, and I think it's in the first canto. I wish I could remember exactly when. And I remember us talking about it maybe two years ago that Vyasa was feeling despondent, and Narada Muni, who is his spiritual master, and he's the one that's giving. Vyasa this information, why? That's how he knows about the conversation between Lord Brahma and Narada Muni. That, that's how we got that, is from the fact that Narada Muni, and he says to him, he analyzes his situation, he says, you've given everybody all this information in the Vedas about um, how to work this machine that we're in, this creation that Krishna has provided, but you haven't given them the, the creed, the nectar. You've given them all the Vedas, and now they can live here and maybe attain salvation in a very long, you know, circuitous route, or mm-hmm. live a very long time in heavenly realms and fall down. He explains the whole workings of the machine, but he hasn't given them mm-hmm. the, the, the cream of the knowledge, and that is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. At that point, then, my understanding was, is that Ganesh says to him, as long as you speak, I will write. Now, I never heard about the Mahabharata. Yeah, I know that he did write the Mahabharata. So, you, and so the, the Mahabharata must have come before the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Yeah. So, so therefore, you know, what the writing part, that's, you know, irrelevant at this point. Because, you know, as long as he's speaking, he is the compiler of the Vedas. And he was described. Ganesh was described, maybe only for the Mahabharata, maybe you're right. But, um, the Srimad Bhagavatam came about after that moment of feeling um, incomplete. Yes. Lord Chaitanya appeared to be a non-devotee until he met his spiritual master. Right. And so that doesn't prove anything that he's a jiva because because even the incarnations don't manifest everything until their spiritual master, then it's just like it comes to the spiritual master. So it might be, I mean, as some as Prabhupada says, is, uh, through, he was able to do it through Narada Muni. Narada Muni is definitely Shaktivesh Avatar. He's definitely, I mean, in the idea that we understand correctly, he's a Jiva soul in power. But the, it's one of the things I want to read here. Sorry, my notes are really slow to go through, but. Um, but Lodjitanya did perform miracles while he was a child. Yeah. So he didn't appear just to be a Jiva. He no, appeared. nobody appears just to be a Jiva. No, you, you, you oh, just, oh, no, not what you, oh, no, because, um, yeah, that's what you're saying. Um, we don't know anything about Shiva Vyasadeva's child if he was growing up in the day. Yeah, that, that, that was a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he wasn't a child. He was growing up in the day and he went off to meditate with his father. Right, yeah, that's so. highly and, and Priti Maharaj just appeared from the arms of his father. Yeah, through a um, sacrificial fire. But then sort of Draupadi and Drishtajuna came from a sacrificial fire. Now this is very interesting to me. That's a lot, off, somewhat off topic, but, but uh, Draupadi came, and my understanding is the animal gets a new body, gets a human body or a younger animal body. So is it to say that Draupadi came from the animal that was sacrificed because all of a sudden she's an advanced human? And uh, with uh, the history of praying to Lord Shiva for her husband, asking three times. So I don't know how that works. But anyways, um, how she got born in the fire already. How, how does a person do that? You're born in a fire already a young adult. And, uh, and you don't have a childhood. You don't, how do you learn things? I don't know. It's beyond me. That's in the Bhagavatam? No, it's in, uh, I think it's in the Mahabharata, the Draupadi and, and Drishtajuna. Is that the right name? Or there were twins. And Drishtajuna was, was born from the sacrificial fire created in order to avenge um, Dronacharya uh, for, for, um, uh, for, for his father uh, Drupa. And, and Draupadi had some purpose too. She came maybe just to be the wife of uh, Pandavas, I don't know. So, but um, anyway, they came out, out of the sacrificial fire. Did they come as babies? <laughs> And then get, get a childhood and get to learn things the normal way, or they come already knowing that it's beyond me. I don't, I don't really know. They don't say this, all this stuff. They just leave us to wonder. Do you, you never heard anything about it? I mean, I think it is some Mahabharas are going into more detail. Po possibly we don't have all Mahabharas. It's not translated verse by verse. Because somebody won't finish his verse by verse translation, meaning, meaning, um, um, we're waiting for his. He was doing verse by verse. So, anyways, everybody's waiting. So, back to Shakti Vesh Avatar. I wish it was that easy and that simple, and I always assumed I understood that too, but when I started looking it up, I found that some it said one way, some it said the other way, and I couldn't conclusively prove anything. I mean, I no, I always thought he was an incarnation of Krishna. But then you read it, it seems like he's not. But then it seems like he is. So he's if he's an incarnation, he's a hidden incarnation. He doesn't write that much about himself, and nobody else does. Um, he just grew up in a day, and he comes and he and he, he shows up in the story. He has, he plays key roles. He's the grandfather of the Pandavas, and so he and the, and the, the other guys. So he but he favors the Pandavas because he knows they're good and they respect him. So he turns up at different key points and helps them or advises them because he's he's interested in them. So um, he just appears out of the out of the woods or something. He just comes just when they need him. And uh, so, but then he said he's the Lord himself too. So yes. It's so funny that I mean, like I I, I read more than half of uh, my parents when I was up there, and I 
it's just so entertaining. I mean, you get such a beautiful feeling of who Krishna is, mm -hmm. who, I mean, Vyasa, I mean, but it's kind of like you're saying, it's very mystical because when they were discussing uh, how unfair uh, the Kurus had been to the Pandavas and trying to get a, away from war, and they would say, well, what does um, Parashram say? You know, what is, they would all be there, you know? They're all like little Krishnas in one way, you know, that they're all, oh, my opinion is this, and they all are on the same page. Mm -hmm. You know, Vyasadeva will speak his opinion, Krishna will speak his opinion, Parashram will, really? Then, yeah, it's just, it's just, it wow. was so entertaining, and you get a feel for um, all these amazing personalities, and it's true, but it's so funny that Vyasadeva, I mean, it's so funny that Krishna, he's acting like an ordinary man, of course, but when they call him on it, he just basically show, puts everyone in their place, you know? And When they call him on it. You know, like when they, uh, okay, so at one point, um, Duryodhana was, they said, let's tie him up because he's just going <laughs> to want us to, favor the Pandavas. He's no good. Or when he and went to, to... They were going to try to like get him and tie him up, and all of a sudden he just starts doing this universal form to everyone that's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everyone's like, huh? What? Yeah. And then yeah. comes Krishna again, and he's like acting normal again, and Jayodhana's like, I'm not going to be afraid of him. I still think he's a, you know, he's put him in a, you know, he's so, he's so much an illusion. But it's just so entertaining because you just see the real Supreme Personality of Godhead, but then you see that he sometimes acts ordinary, but he is. He never acts ordinary, but I mean, he will come and they will ask his opinion. Yeah, he and, you know, it's so just, is, is, that the, is that the situation in which all the sages are there, including Parshiram and everybody? Well, at some... Uh, um, different times. At different... At one time when, they, when Krishna was going to give the message from the Pandavas, like, look, they want their kingdom back. They've been in exile all these years. Mm -hmm. They did what you said. And now Duryodhana didn't want to give them a piece of land to put a stick of pin in. And, you know, he would say things like that. And everyone was <laughs> like, are you kidding? Look, what did you, you know, you're, and then, you know, but Vyasa is there too. And he just comes all stinky, matted hair, you know, like, that's why Drita Rastra was blind, that's why Pandu yeah, yeah. was white, and it was just, I mean, it's funny to think that here's this character, yet he's the one that wrote the whole thing. Yeah, and he's hidden, it says, this is how it is with an author, an author is the hidden person in the book. Yeah. Because, because the author shows every word, the author is very much present on every page. <laughs> But the author is a hidden person, and the author directs you everywhere else. But I thought the um, I always heard that Mahabharata was written by Valmiki. No, that's, that's the Ramayana. Ramayan. Oh, that's the Ramayana. Yeah. Oh. yeah, that's a different. So um, yeah, not including the the uh, Ramayana, I guess. But the, everything that was collected and written in this period of time, five thousand years ago, written down. Um, apparently, not the Ramayana. Yeah, that was even like Shri Prabhupada. Yeah, I didn't interrupt. It. But Shri Prabhupada would say, you know, he'd be list, wanting the devotees to read the Krishna book to him, and he said, they would ask, well, you know, you wrote this. He said, no, I, you know, I, I get something new out of it every time. That, that actually, Super Soul was writing mm -hmm. this. Or like the Chaitanya Charitamrita. There's no way that Krishna Das Kaviraj could have written because he was trembling, he was blind. It was being written and dictated by Madame Mahat, mm -hmm. the deity. Yeah. So, um, so like you said, the author is hidden. Well, the author is Krishna, and that manifestation, mm -hmm. in this case, we're saying is Vyasa. Yeah. But in that, the prophet says it's Paramatma is, is writing my books. I didn't write these books. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's very. It doesn't matter, you know. When you come to you, you, you delve deeper and deeper into it, you realize it doesn't matter, and yet it's very fascinating. But it, it's all this, like the same. Let me just read some things here. And hopefully I'll re read some of the um, things I was talking about. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, I'll just, I'll just read backwards in my, my list. That way I'll get 
the important ones. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam 1326 purport. Some incarnations mentioned above are almost plenary portions. Example, for Kumaras, Narada, Prithu, and Matya is directly a plenary portion. Interesting quote. Okay, all the above incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions. Srimad Bhagavatam 1328. That's what I'm wondering if a portion of a plenary portion means like jiva, so not, I don't know. Srimad Bhagavatam 197. All the sages like Parvata Muni, Narada, Domya, Vyasa, the incarnation of God, comma, purport, Vyasa Dev is a powerful incarnation of Narayan. Uh, that was, um, yeah, okay, so what? Srimad Bhagavatam 117 purport. As supreme controller of both material and spiritual worlds, the Lord has different incarnations of unlimited categories. Uh, incarnations like Brahma, Rudra, Manu, Pritu, and Vyasa, frustratingly, he's in this list now, are his material qualitative um, incarnations. See why I, I said, you can't know for sure. You can't understand from this. But his incarnations like Ram, Nusenga, Varaha, and Vamana are his transcendental incarnations. Because then other times you'll say he's the incarnation of God. Okay, then um, Srimad Bhagavatam 117, Vyasadeva, who is the incarnation of Godhead. Um, Srimad uh, Bhagavatam 112, purport, Srimad Bhagavatam was written in the maturity of his sp spiritual life through the mercy of Narada. Contradiction. Sri Vyasadeva is the authorized incarnation of Narayana. So that's what I'm saying. It's like... It's like sort of mysterious. At a certain point, we can't know, and it doesn't matter because the the um, the um, Kumaras, Narada, Muni, they're almost plenary portions. So there is the so the only difference is if somebody is a separated soul or not. But otherwise, it can be there's no difference. <laughs> it is between one kind of empowerment and another kind of empowerment. It's all Krishna anyway. So uh, this is. Very, very fascinating and mysterious. Okay, I guess that, I guess that covered the, the questions here. So anyways, he did, and like you were saying, that the uh, Mahabharata is so entertaining. He agreed to write the Mahabharata if, if um, what was it, that he agreed to write it, or, or um, Ganesh agreed to write it down. One of them agreed to the other one as long as there was no stopping. Right. So I think I think that um, Ganesh said, "I'll write it down if you don't stop." And then Ganesh's pen broke, so he, you know he had to, he had that stand he had to live up to the standard too. So broke up his tusk and wrote with that. So I think um, there's something mystical going on here too. The average elephant tusk tip doesn't write words very well. So there's something mysterious about that. So anyways, at least the Mahabharata, he wrote. But otherwise, whatever, however method, the, um, he wrote all these. And, it, and there's a lot of entertainment in it. Like in the stories, he, he puts details that, get, that are really interesting. And in the Mahabharata especially, it's such a great story that he's really, he's, he's not just some kind of like stuffy ivory tower kind of scholar. You know, he's, he's writing it deliberately so that it's interesting to us. And that means he's a good, like a novel writer. You know, he's, he's writing with sensory details and, and all this kind of stuff like modern writers know that if you want people to read it, you've got to do that. So, so he's doing that. So, but he's the invisible person in the Mahabharata. I mean, not invisible because he pops up here and there and he speaks as he, as he interacts with the story. But he's on every page, and he's invisible on every page, and it's so amazing. And to know that he, that, and he is, one way or another, he is the incarnation of Narayan. And he wrote down all these books that were written, that were from this time period, anyways, um, that were collected in this time period, not including the Ramayana, and not including Lord Chaitanya's time period. But, and he's the incarnation of God. So, we have directly the Word of God in all these books. And just as Prabhupada, though he's invisible as the author in the books, we, invisible as we read the books, nevertheless, we develop a relationship with Prabhupada. So we also have a relationship with Srila Vyasadeva and with Shukadeva Goswami and with Sutta Goswami because they're in these books too, word by word, they're in it, invisibly, yes. I thought it was 
also pretty interesting that, you know, his mom, such a petite, right, was, was conceived by Parashuram. Par Parashuram. Uh -huh. Not Parashuram, Parashuram. Parashuram, Parashara. yeah, different. Oh, okay. Yeah, different. Oh, okay. And, right, uh, yeah. I was wondering yeah. No. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's interesting, too, because, because all the interesting women, all the interesting women in the, in the dynamics of this story, Satyavati and uh, Kunti and Draupadi particularly, those three women. Now, women in the Vedic age, they only had one husband, period, right? One husband. All of a sudden, we've got women who have three interesting key women who are great pure devotees who have more than one husband. Satyavati had a secret husband before, and nobody knew about her, quote, illegitimate son. Before her, yeah. Before her, that took place within one day, and he grew up and he was gone, and she went her virginity. She was guaranteed to be a virgin Yeah, after yeah. But she, in her heart, she's got, she's got her husband, um, Santanu, and in her heart, she's remembering Parasara, too. Of course. So, um, and the same thing with um, Kunti. She had only one husband, Pandu, but however, she had the sun god, she had the, um, 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 Dharma and Indra and Vayu as husbands, in that they came to her and they knew her, biblical word, and they gave her children. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't what? Something about Pandu being cursed or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it happened later. That's why she had to have that yeah. She, she was married to him, and it doesn't ever say whether they ever had sex or not. I don't know what it says. But anyway, there was no offspring. They weren't allowed to because he was cursed by... But he was already married to her. So what happened before the curse? They were married for a while before the curse. He went, they were married, he had two wives, he was enjoying with his wives in the palace, he got restless, he, he went out, he conquered the world again, and he said, I like the forest. So he went to the forest, his wives were with him, they had a hunting lodge, and he was out hunting, then he got carried away in his hunting, and then he got cursed. What I'm trying to say is, the, the things that when Kunti was having the different children from the different demigods, it wasn't like Pandu was upset or angry. No, Pandu asked her to do this. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, we're just being honest. Yeah, yeah. No, so, but nevertheless, here's a woman who has more than one man in her life, and she's a key, pure devotee woman. And then Draupadi, not to mention Draupadi, five husbands, all simultaneously. Nowadays we may have five husbands, but one at a time. But anyway, these women are relatable to modern women who have complex histories, even if only dating before they get married. Women have complex histories, boyfriends and whatever, you know, not in modern times. We're, you know, raised to mix and everything. So this is also a very interesting thing that these women are relatable. For, for Women have somebody to relate to, not that this, you know, I've got, have had boyfriends, I've had different husbands, and now here's this pure woman, how, how could I be like that, how could I follow? No, but that these women are, by, by so-called Vedic standards, that's improper. So, but there they are, great pure devotees, key to the story. That's another interesting thing about how this whole thing is so relatable to modern people. So, so, thoughtful of Krishna to make it so relatable so that we can relate and become devotees. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, there was so much drama when Kunti, you know, she's always feeling guilty for leaving um, the uh, baby Karna in the yeah, what, when he yeah, in the water yeah. in the basket. And a secret. finally she, she had to deal with the reality yeah. and tell him. Uh -huh. But, I mean, that's also like a drama. You can relate to that. Women yeah, how many? You can relate to that. Like, why didn't you tell me I was your mother? You know, you hear stories like that yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. and then somebody who adopted, looking for their real mother, but the real mother was yeah. pining away in her heart for that child that she adopted, uh, adopted out. So all these things are, make, make this path accessible to modern people. So, okay, I guess that's everything.
you know, just doesn't she, she said I'm an American, but she don't look very much. She look like from Saudi Arabia. Black hair, long nose. Then she went back and asked her mother, you know, she said, Were you ever in the country? She said yes. <laughs> you know, she was what? dad started. And then she found out, you know, she pressured her mom really bad. Well I mean when, when when is she she? American. Yeah, but she didn't look like that. So she what? said she always had that feeling. I didn't catch what she asked her mother. She said, Do, were you in this country? Oh. Because she, I'm not the first one, but I just kind of like kindled her, you know, like really, you know, I just can't believe you're from here. Your hair is black and your nose is long. Well, Americans can be. And then she started okay. finally after a year, she keep on pestering and pestering and pestering. Her mother revealed she couldn't take it anymore. And what did her mother reveal? Her mother had an affair over there. And the father didn't know. Oh. Yeah, she told me everything after a year she came back. She didn't look like her family. She didn't. She showed, I said, show me your father. I said, no, this doesn't look like you. Oh my gosh. Mother, she's a boy. Oh, Ronnie, what are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> just like you. I was so so rushing. I didn't mean to like, get it started, but she said she was thankful later though. Yeah. I mean, I know both of them, but then uh -huh. finally she did. She was very upset though after she found out. Mm -hmm. And then she found, then she started searching the father. Then she found the father. It was like a rubbish man, you know. Wow. He knew about it. And something mm -hmm. like that. So it happens, you know. Yeah. It truly happens. So we we who have these complications in our life and might feel like unqualified, ashamed, low, guilty, and all that kind of stuff, there's these other women who have complications also. So we can identify with them. So that's pretty interesting. Everything was done there before so that we, we will be learning or seeing or hearing now. You know, but I don't know about the five husbands yet. I'm still waiting to see that. But waiting to see what? <laughs> we haven't seen that here. Five husbands. Not five husbands at a time, but, but it's not uncommon to have five husbands one at a time. Okay. Well, <laughs> that happens. And in your heart, you never feel. And nobody had her five husbands one at a time. One year with this one, one year with this one, yeah. one year with this one. So. Is it so unrelatable for us? It's like, okay, I can connect with that, you know? Even two, you know, the man will just look down on the woman like crazy. You know? Uh, the, the man can have two wives. That's yeah. very common in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a woman with two husbands, that, you know? No, these women were not supposed to have done these things. It was secret stuff. Yeah. But still, it happened. And they carried that in their heart, the, the whatever, the guilt, the remember, remembrance, whatever. Okay, I'll go to Shua Papa and I'll go to Shima Bhagavatam. That was a fun verse. Ashtika Suchitra, they're all so, so sick. So I just better cook the lunch. Just no, Rani, we don't have anyone dressing right around the I know, I'm like, like I, I'm last minute. You Will know, you like, be able to do it I don't know, I was going to come today, I couldn't. So I have to get Balaram to do it. So if I cannot, I'll get Balaram. These are all not my days, and it's oh, just yeah. precious to me. I 